are looking at um, Pontormo's Entombment, a typical Mannerist painting from about 1520. And we want to use this as a starting off point to talk about what follows Mannerism. Right, a kind of rejection of Mannerism Abs is going to happen. Very rhetorically, a rejection of Mannerism is going to come around beginning in the last quarter of the 16th century, in the late 1570s, especially 1580s and onwards. And I can see why people would reject it. I mean, it's incredibly complicated. Exactly. It's difficult to read. Sure. It's hard to tell what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are a lot of reasons that this doesn't sort of seem like the traditional definition of art, especially when you think about the Renaissance and its interest in naturalism. All of the qualities, its difficulty in reading, its enigmatic qualities, the very stylized, elegant nature, these were all things that made Mannerist art good in the Mannerist period. But after uh, over 50 years of Mannerism's dominance in Italy, beginning in the 1520s and reaching towards the end of the century, a backlash does begin to build exactly towards the issues that you were talking about. And there's a growing desire, for many reasons, a few of which we'll talk about, for a return to the basic principles of the High Renaissance, which mm -hmm. they look back upon um, from 70 years later uh, as a period when art was good for several different reasons. Uh -huh. And so one of the reasons that they're going to reject mannerism has to do with its illegibility at a time mm -hmm. when the church is being attacked and really needs art to communicate in a very easy and direct way, right, because of the Reformation. Sure. The Protestant uh, Reformation was criticizing art coming out of the Catholic areas for being too distracting and for not communicating the story well. And so, as we know, the Protestants tended to put their emphasis on the written word in the Bible rather than on art because they would point to something like this and say, this is not a good religious teaching tool. Right. And the whole way that the church defended art right. was by saying it was there to teach. Right. So then how could you point to this right. and say that this was teaching anybody anything? Exactly. And so a, a new style is, as the Counter-Reformation is building even beginning in the 1540s, but especially but towards the end of the century, they feel that a new style is needed. That makes sense. Our story about this reaction actually starts in Bologna, and it starts there for a couple of reasons. One reason is that Cardinal Paleotti, who was one of the leaders of the Counter-Reformation, was a bishop from Bologna, and at the various meetings of the Council of Trent, which was this religious convention to formulate the Catholic response to the Protestant Reformation, Cardinal Paleotti was in charge, essentially, of figuring out what to do about art, how to make good, in quotes, ah. art that would be immune to the criticism of the Protestants. Right. And the Council of Trent also meets in Bologna several times. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. I thought they only met in Trent. No. Uh, <laughs> as frequently happened during this era, sometimes when the plague or other diseases would break out, ah. they would move the conferences to other places. <laughs> and so because you have this bishop from Bologna, and because also the council was taking place sometimes in Bologna, it's almost first in Bologna that you see artists responding to this need for an art that is basically more straightforward, clear, legible, a good religious teaching tool. Didactic. Exactly. And it gets rid of all of the ambiguities and the overwrought elegance that they see being the problem by now with some of the most characteristic works of mannerism that had come before. Yeah, and I noticed that here in this image of the crucifixion. This is by... This is by Anibale Caracci. Uh, this is a crucifixion from pretty early in his career, around the 1580s. And this was made in Bologna. In fact, you can see a little miniature Bologna down at the bottom, as well as in the ah. distance. Um, and here we see an artist who, as a young man, is trying to formulate uh, a new style of painting, in part, although not exclusively, because of this new religious atmosphere of the Counter-Reformation that's pushing artists to make art that is legible, straightforward, easy to understand, and properly communicates the stories from the Bible or other religious texts. What I notice most about it is this kind of uh, emotional quality to it, where the gestures are very, it's very clear from everyone's gestures and facial expressions what they're feeling. You know, the right. grasping of the chest, or the throwing out of the arms. And the There's facial expressions. Of, a kind of overwrought acting going on. Uh, yes, that's definitely true. and. In the style that Anibale Caracci and his brother and cousin are also artists working with him and others that soon will follow them, this is going to give birth to the Baroque style. And what you've just described are very much characteristics of the Baroque style. Um, 
bold gestures, bold facial expressions to make the meaning and the narrative as clear, clear as possible yeah. in absolute contrast to all of the ambiguities and the emotionless, uh, fanciful renderings that we saw right. of these kinds of scenes in mannerism. And also a kind of emotion to make things have a, a kind of impact on the viewer, right. too, which is something we didn't see so much in the high Renaissance when mm -hmm. there was a kind of distance in that well, ideal beauty. Yeah. Here there's a kind of down-to-earth this is what the story is telling us. It's, this is how the figures are feeling. It's definitely more dramatic and energized than a high Renaissance composition might have been. What I always say is, in some ways, the, the Baroque style is a return to the principles of the high Renaissance, but with the volume turned way, way up. Way up to 11. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's 10. Right. And so, you know, the gestures and the facial expressions are one way that this becomes very dramatic. Mm -hmm. uh, Baroque paintings, like already we can see in this one, tend to have dramatic lighting. Uh, right. very frequently. Right. And then something else that also increases the intensity and the legibility and the clarity of the image is that all the figures are quite large and pressed mm -hmm. right up against the yeah, front of the picture plane. Everything's very close to us. Very close to the viewer to really almost inter, uh, enter the viewer's space yeah. and to really heighten that sense that you are there too yeah. and you can experience this and it will heighten your religious devotion. Yeah. Uh, also typical of Baroque art and its rejection of mannerism is the intense or great simplification of the composition. Uh, there are no complicated patterns. There are no contorted positions. There is no enigmatic representation of space or foreshortening. Everything is boiled down to its essentials. There is nothing extraneous in these early Baroque paintings. So it's the narrative. Exactly. That's really the narrative most is the core. There's nothing extra. There's nothing confusing. The other thing also is that compared to Mannerist paintings, the Karachi and their later Baroque followers are very intent in creating very naturalistic images. Gone is the very attenuated, elegant stylization of Mannerism. There's a return to basics also in the rendering of the figure and its anatomical accuracy and the representation of fabric and depth and space and gravity and three-dimensionality, everything that was illogical in a Mannerist work of art and praised for it at that time now becomes logical and clear and straightforward. So there's, and there's a kind of implicit criticism sure. in Mannerism, a kind of saying, you know, Mannerism wasn't good art. Well, right? the Karachi literally did say that. Uh, they were not only artists, but they were art critics in a way, and they were responding to the praise of Mannerism from the earlier decades and saying, no, uh, this is not good art because it doesn't replicate nature, because it's not based on study from life. And so they go around looking at artists who they thought of as good, um, including the typical ones we think of from the high renaissance like Raphael and Michelangelo and so on, but also traveling to areas that didn't tend to be emphasized in the literature as much, traveling around their native region of Emilia, but also looking at people like Titian and Veronese in yeah, Venice. And you can see all is. of these influences in their yeah. paintings. And an early one like this, or also in a later more mature work like this Lamentation, which is from around 1605. Still, this is Anibale Karachi. And we can see the basic hallmarks of this new Baroque style that's emerged. Yeah. Intense, very dramatic, rendering of the narrative, but at the same time, very simple, very straightforward. There's no mistaking the emotions. There's no mistaking the narrative and what's going on here. Christ looks dead. Um, but again, also very strikingly naturalistic, very yeah. descriptive. And you know, it's so, it's so easy to, to read. I mean, my eye goes first to this figure of Christ at the bottom who's been removed from the cross, right? And then it goes up to Mary Magdalene who's got that kind of dramatic emotion, you know, throwing her arms up and um, kneeling and looking down at him and then up to, I guess, the other Mary. The other Marys, yep. Um, you know, reaching out so that those arms that reach out toward the third woman, so we our eye then moves across and then it moves down toward Christ's right. mother and then back down toward Christ. I mean, there's a kind of your way that the artist is really leading our eye through the composition in a very sort of uh, methodical way. And also playing down the areas of the composition that don't necessarily contribute to the narrative. And so again, notice that the figures are very close to the front of the picture plane and everything right. behind them is in dark right, there's no and shadow. Architecture, there's exactly, no nothing to distract landscape, you. Right. And also in terms of the composition, we should say that here we can see one of the most important features of all Baroque art, in addition to the naturalism and the drama, the very strong diagonal yeah. that cuts across the picture plane, I was just also adding. Kind of have 
two parallel diagonal mm -hmm. lines. Also adding to the energized drama of the scene. Yeah.